And let's see if it starts recording. Yep, it starts recording. So let's let's jam. So this is chapter technically it's chapter five, but it's really it's it's E. And we covered this last time. I'm just gonna go over stuff here. We're good. So this is just appendix E first, and then we're gonna take jump into five point one. And then we'll finish up all five one today, most likely in here. So first things first, just the answers. I'm going to go through it super quick, like twice as fast as we went last time. Good? So if you were here last time, you're good. If not, copy down just a few as we go. Let's do just A. So exercise one, write the sum in expanded form. And if you can get the full on sum, you can do that. And I have all the answers. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> And I'm recording here. So real quick here. So this guy here is called the index. Index is used as I. We use J sometimes, K, and N, just depending on H very rarely as well. <clears throat> you have a start number right here. Usually it's one. You have an end number. And then you have the formula for it. Whatever the formula is, it's going to go right into here. Sometimes I, sometimes I squared, sometimes just I plus two. That's fine as well. And this guy is the capital S from the Greek alphabet. And obviously, it stands for sum. So we're just adding or summing up I the I values from 1 to 6. Da -da -da. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we get a 21. OK, does it get complicated? Yes. So jump to something like this. Notice this one. Again, I'm skipping B, C, and D. Jump to E. So notice this one does not have an N value. It just says N. And this one's a little more complicated. It's i over i plus 1. So our starting value is not 1 anymore. It's 3. So if you want to write it out like this, this would be expanded form. And also, if you want to write it out as like 3 over 4 plus 4 over 5 plus 5 over 6 plus 6 over 7, that's fine too. You don't need to include the plus 1 initially. But then this one does not end. It goes on to n, whatever n is. So then we have to formulate the n number is n over n plus 1 dot, 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 to say it keeps on going. Okay, are we good there? And then let's go backwards. So if you go backwards, it says if I give you this right here, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus all the way to 12, <clears throat> can you go back and formulate my summation formula? And yeah, it looks like it starts off with 1, looks like it goes up to 12, and looks like the value itself is just I. I'm summing right here, summing from 1 to 12. OK, we're good there. Same as last time. We're cool there. All right, and then just note in the back of the book, sometimes those will <clears throat> be different, because sometimes you can have two different ones. I can start it like this, from going from 0 to n. And there'll be a slightly different formula than over here. So notice that, yeah, so you can have two different formulas they give you the same type of expanded form. OK, good so far. So then we have formulas that we come up with. Let's do the first one, and I'll give you guys all the rest of them here. So the first formula we come up with here. Oh, go ahead, I'll finish up if you need to. Yeah? OK, so first formula. There it is, special cases, specific formulas, if we are adding one each time. And we'll do that quite a bit. If you go i is equal to 1 all the way to n, the question is, what's the sum of this? So 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 all the way n times. <clears throat> so <clears throat> this is just going to give us n. So there's our summation formula right away. We don't need to add them up and stuff. If we just write whatever n is, that will be our answer. So it's called explicit formulas. And those you want to write down, the one in boxes. Or else we're going to get lost if we don't. OK, good, good. Good time here. The next formula. Here it is. What happens if any kind of number, like 4 or 12 or 62, if we do that, what's the explicit formula? This one, if it's 62 plus 62 plus 62 plus 62 plus 62, or any kind of constant, we could just multiply the constant by n, and that will give us the explicit sum formula. OK, 
Okay, cool. We'll get there. This is kind of cool. At the end, we'll see where this leads to. Okay, we're good there. Next, what happens if you're just adding I? This is kind of interesting. That starts, so you just need to write down that formula right there, just the one in the bracket. So if you just start writing I, a little bit more complicated, it's n times n plus 1 divided by 2. That will give you the explicit sum formula of adding i's. OK. And then two more. We need i squared and i cubed, because that's as far as we're going to go. Could we go to i to the fourth? Yes. And we can go on and on and on, but we're going to stick with just cube powers. All right, and let's do one example. Let's show an example here. How do we do this here? <clears throat> uh, not that one. This one. B would probably be an easier one. This one, if you can just plug it in and you can kind of do it yourself, that's fine. That's easy enough. But if you can do it by formula, notice you got a 2 as a constant, but we're not adding up constants, right? We're adding up two i's. So you could just multiply this to a so multiplication of a constant is just that. Technically, we're just adding up i values. And that becomes n times n plus 1 over 2. Two's cancel, and there's our explicit formula for 2i. Cool. All right, and then the fun begins. So let's jump back here. So from geometry, we know the area of stuff, and area is going to be important for us because once we find area, we can find volume as well. We'll see on how that happens. And from geometry, we can find areas of rectangles, triangles, squares, diamonds, or so parallelograms, right? Kite or rhombus, whatever this one is, trapezoids and circles. And we're pretty much limited to these little places right here and any regular polygons, right? And that's where your geometry probably stopped. But what we want to do is we want to be able to find a formula or area of anything, even like something curvy as that right there, which looks like, anybody? Looks like a lake to me, maybe, right? A lake that has something. A shoe. <laughs> Need some laces right over here, right here. Goofy's shoe, okay. <clears throat> um, but also think about this here. If we can get area, I'll show you guys, you can get volume as well. So if you have a, like a Coke bottle, right? The question is how much volume is in that Coke bottle or a Coca-Cola bottle? We don't know because it's all, it's all glass, right? And it's all curved, right? Technically it's 12 ounces, right? <clears throat> so, what we can do is we were going to try to figure out how to find areas and volumes of anything in the whole entire world. Are we good? That's what we want to do, essentially, after this or with this information. So let's jam. So let's go 5.1 now. So we started this last time here. So technically this. I can find the area, or I want us to find the area underneath the curve of x squared. Going from zero to one. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> so now we can get areas of anything whatsoever. We'll show you how that works. But specifically, our formula is this right here. So the question is this. What's the area right here? So it's an area under a curve. Right there. <laughs> so let's go with it. I know we started already here, so let me jump to the next slide and then we'll kind of work our way through it here. Oh, you know, I forgot to take out all these little extra things here. I'm going to go like this here. So 
<clears throat> Sorry, I'm gonna have you write all this down because it is important as we get to the end here. So we'll get to the end today, 5.1, which should be, I think, pretty cool. So don't mind this stuff over here at the end. I can erase all that right there, like that. It's just this little piece right here. I, and we can get the exact answer, we can get the approximate answer. So here's what I got. So I have x squared. I guess I could do it this way here. Let's see. Uh, will this help here if we do it by piece by piece? Uh -huh. no, so this is x squared just going from 0 to 1 only, right? And what I want is I want that area there. So we as humans, and particularly Leibniz, in 1500s, he came up with this little system, which I thought, well, that makes sense. If we just partition this off, say for this case, it's going to be four pieces. We're good, just to sort of take a look at it. And so what he did is he said, okay, if that's the case, I'm going to make these boxes. I know I'm going to overestimate. I know that, but at least I want to estimate. So I'm going to make these rectangles, and I'm going to use the right side of each rectangle. So the right side here, the right side there. The right side there, and then eventually I'm going to get to one. So yes, I am totally overestimating here. But let's try it here. So if I do this here, if I cut zero to one into four pieces, are we good? That means my first piece is going to be one fourth. My second piece will be two fourths, or technically one half. My third piece should be three fourths, and I should finish off with four fourths. That's what I should do. Okay, so the question is this. What's the width of each one of these rectangles? The height changes, right? But the width is all the same. Width is one-fourth. Absolutely. It's the number of what we divided by. Cool, cool. Okay, so now let's do this here. Since I'm using the right side, I'm going to make this. That's one-fourth, and that's one-fourth, and that's one-fourth, right? I'm going to use R. R saying I'm taking the right side of each of my rectangles, and I'm going to use the number four because I divided it to four pieces. And so with this case, oh, that's easy. Hold on. So rectangles are just width times height. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, good, good. Because on the next one, we're going to start off on the left side, which would be right here, and that's going to be our height. We'll see in just a bit. So as I build my first rectangle, I'm using my right-hand side, which is this one right here. Okay, so let's go with it. So my width is one-fourth. That's easy. And it so happens if I start out with zero, my x value will also be one-fourth. True, true. But then my formula says, what's my height here? Uh-huh. So this is my width right here. And then my height is going to be this x coordinate, right, to the second power, because that's going to be my height right here. Does that make sense, right? That's how high I go. And the next one's going to be also one fourth, because that's again my width. But what's my x coordinate now? One half to the second power, because I need my height. And then I need another width times the height, so which is three fourths now to the second power plus. again and now it's one to the second power perfect okay and not going to trouble you i know you guys can do this eventually so that's not the whole point of this exercise the whole point of exercise just to understand how we're cutting this up so if i did this real quick at home and i got myself 15 30 seconds or 15 over 32 as my approximation if i want to do approximation of it here it's 0.46875, if I want to be precise. Okay. So I know I'm overestimating. I know that I have extra stuff here, right? Well, let's do this here. Now let's do it the left-hand side. Are we good? I'm going to see if I can do it left-hand side. If I do it the left-hand side, I'll be underestimating. So I know my answer is somewhere in the middle. So let's go with it here. So... 
And so if I do left hand side, this is what this is what kind of gets crazy here. If I do the right hand side, notice if I'm going down, notice I have gaps now. We're good. If I go up, I'm overestimating. So it's not so much as like I oh I always overestimate if I'm using the right hand side. No. Just totally depending on the graph itself. We're good. So if it was going down, I would be overestimating if I was using the left hand side. But notice real quick here, if I have two, this is two rectangles. Notice I have a gap here, a gap here, right? If I have four rectangles, so if I have eight, if I have 12, that would be crazy to compensate, but it gets, it looks like it's getting more accurate. I just have to prove that it's getting more accurate. We're good. Somehow we got to prove it. Okay, so let's go with it. So let's do the left-hand side now. Same stuff. I'm going to have to go like this and this and get rid of this because this is from Friday's class and can't show answers yet. So let's go. Same exact setup. There it is. I'm going to chop it up into four different pieces again. They're in different order for some reason. I'm missing the one half for some reason. One over something. Guessed at something. <laughs> Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit interesting. And I can tell when you're ready. Okay, so notice I'm going to use, I'm going to use the left-hand side now. So my first coordinate is actually 0, 0. We're good? So my first coordinate is 0, 0. My second coordinate is going to be 1, 4. So notice what I'm doing here. I'm going from here. I'm going to here to the 1 half. Then from the 1 half, I'm going to here. So I'm actually going to stop at 3 fourths. I have these gaps right here. This is way underestimating, especially with a zero here. So see if this makes sense to you guys here. L4 is left-hand side, four rectangles. Good, one-fourth. Yeah, one-fourth is still my width of my first rectangle, but my x-coordinate is zero. And that is my height here. So that goes away. So I've got my four one-fourth times... Okay, now I get my one fourth this time, right? Which is my second coordinate, but it's one fourth. Then I get my one half, which is missing. Oh, there it is, my two pop up finally. So in this case, it would still be one fourth. Now it's going to be three fourths squared, and that's it, right? I stop here because my last x coordinate I use is this one. So now the question is if I were to add them up and find out what this is, now I get myself seven thirty seconds. 7 over 32. Uh-huh. True, yeah. Or find the middle of it, right? Yeah. So the only problem is this. If you find the middle of it, uh, it's still sloping up. So even if you got the exact middle of those two, you'd still be off by a little bit because of the flat. slope. If it, yeah, it was flat going across, then yeah, we would get those. So that's our problem. That's what Leibniz and Newton had to deal with. Okay, so one more. Let's do one more. We didn't do this one last time, so this is the new stuff here. So we can use right-hand side of rectangles. We can use the left-hand side of rectangles. We can also use the exact middle of a rectangle. It's called the mid midway. So here it is. Same exact setup here. We're going to do it three different ways. <clears throat> and then math got stuck. And I'll say this, math got stuck for about 2,000 years. Because we did not have notation, and we could not figure out how to do limits to infinity until Leibniz came along and Newton came along. Okay, so this is called the midpoint way of doing it. So note it's going to be this right here. It's going to be, that's the middle of 0 to 1 fourth, and that's going to be my height. So the middle between 1 fourth and 1 half, that's going to be my height here. And my third rectangle, that's going to be my height here. And my fourth rectangle is going to be my height here. So that seems like it's actually getting better, isn't it, for this one? <clears throat> Still, we're off by a little bit. We know because the curvature of it, right?
So let's do this one together here. So we're going to do M for midpoint. We're going to use four rectangles. And now you guys have to help me out here. The width on this guy is one fourth. What's my X coordinate? Yeah, one eighth. Are we good at with one eighth? It's kind of like zero plus one fourth divided by two. Right. One eighth is going to be that. Oh, that fun one. I guess three eighths, right? Because if you cut this up in half, this would be one eighth, two eighths. Oh, three eighths right here. That's three eighths. So four eighths. That's nice. That's five eighths. I feel like I'm digging through my socket wrench at home or something. Three eighths and five eighths. Uh, so the five eighths, and that should be seven eighths, then, right? Because that would be six eighths and. Seven eighths. Okay, again, the goal of the exercise is not for you guys to compute this here, but just note that we got closer, I think, with this one. This is 21 over 64. 21 over 64, or approximately that right there. 21 over 64. Okay, uh, so we know, let's see, we overestimated by... I'm going to go back in my notes here now, real quick here. So my highest is 15. Is that 15 over 32? My lowest is 7 over 32. And somewhere about 10.5, right? 10.5 over 32-ish, right? So there it is. We're stuck, guys. So Archimedes, he kind of had this formulation in his mind when he was trying to figure out the approximation for pi. And Archimedes, smart mathematician, super smart. Um, he just did not have all the notation down. He did think about limits. And he did kind of sort of like, if you take this to infinity, this would kind of be close to this. You have Zeno coming along, Zeno's paradox. He tried to take stuff to infinity, but he did it in the context of physics, not mathematics. And so it stopped. About 250 BC, math does not progress in terms of limits anymore. So then 500, yeah, 1500 years later, Leibniz comes along, Newton comes along, and he says this. They go back to this problem. And here's what we want to do. And so now let's put your thinking caps on. Let's do this here. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to do this all over again. One, two more times, guys. Two more times. Yep, two more times the same problem, too. So could you imagine uh, when we first started doing this, what they would do, they would put like, instead of four, they would put 10 boxes, right? Because 10 is pretty easy. You can divide by 10, right? They put 20, and then they put 100, right? And they're doing this all by hand, right? And they're kind of thinking, okay, how do I get to the approximation here? And so Leibniz comes along and says this. Go ahead. Yes, uh -huh, yeah, it gets so that uh, so the seven thirty seconds and the fifteen thirty seconds, right? They become closer and closer and closer. But then the question is, what's that middle? That's the question. So here's what Leibniz kind of thinks through. Okay, I got this interesting idea. I know limits can go into infinity, right? It's theoretical, but it works for derivatives. Let's do this. I'm going to divide this guy into. I don't care n number of rectangles. You don't need to put that many. You don't need to put as many I did. But I'm going to just divide by n. If you want to put six in there, that's fine, right? It doesn't matter how many you put in there. Okay, thinking caps on. Let's see what we got. I'm going to need to use the right hand side, and I'm going to use n, not four, not ten, not a hundred. I'm going to use n. n could be 10, right? n could be 1,000, right? My question to you is this. What is my width? So let's see. My width each time, each and every single time, is going to be 1 over n. Are we good there with that? 
All right, the reason for it is this right here. If you guys can think about this here. <clears throat> Whenever you divide something, you always take the high value called B, right? And take the small value. So it's one divided by, oh, sorry, one minus zero, we good? One minus zero. And then we divide it by how many divisions we have on it, right? Perfect, okay, so now, now the fun begins. If I'm using the right-hand side, if I'm using my right hand side, what's my first x coordinate? Uh, one over n. Perfect. My first x coordinate would be one over n because I'm going one over n away from zero, right? Perfect. And my width is going to be one over n. What's going to be my second x coordinate? And I can see Jeopardy. Two over n. Absolutely. And then I'm going to go one over n. 3 over n, and how many times am I going to do this? 10 times. I can go fourth one. Yeah, I'm going to go all the way up to n. Oh, hold on. Am I going? Just be very careful Seven. here. Start off with n, right? 1 over n is the last one, right? And I'm going to go n over n times. We're good? Yeah. Because if I use the left-hand side, right, I'm going to be a little different. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Uh huh. So, yeah. Here it is. Here's your one fourth. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No problem. No problem. Okay. So now let the fun begin. Yeah. Uh, dot dot dot, which means it keeps on going. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. So the one before n over n would be 1 over n. And then it would be n minus 1 on top, n minus 1 over here. Because right, it would be 1 away from n. Uh huh. Uh huh. Good. Uh, so next one would be 1 over n, right? There'll be 4 over n squared, right? Let's see if I'm getting your... Let me see if I'm getting... Uh, let's simplify this as much as possible. Can I factor something out? 1 over n goes out nicely. 1 over n is out. Okay, next. Next, is there something else I can factor out? Yes, a squared. What's squared? Are we okay with 1 over n squared? Because notice this one. This one's going to be a 1, right? This one's going to be a 4 over n squared. This would be a 9 over n squared. So notice each one of them has a 1 over n squared. Are we good? Yeah, eventually, uh-huh. So what's left over? Bless you. What is... Uh-huh. We have that. Is that true? True. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. <clears throat> okay, I got that, 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 that. Okay, thinking caps on still. Oh, 
Anybody give me the formula, the sum formula for um, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared? I squared formula. Uh -huh. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, I didn't show that step here. Could be written as this. Um, one over n squared, uh, four over n squared, or two squared, three squared over n squared. Da da da. Mm -hmm. Did you say that? Yeah. And then the other part that we could have done. Over n to the third power. Okay. Does that help there? Yeah. All right. And then let's see. So on the bottom, I have one over n times one over n squared. So that's one over n cubed. That's easy enough. And then I got myself the formula, which I think someone said who said it was n. n plus one, two n plus one over over six. Are we good? Okay, question is this, can I simplify this out anymore? Um, we're getting close to 11 here, all right. Oh, cool, yeah, so we've got an n cubed on the bottom, we have an n on top, we can cancel one of those. So then I have n plus 1, 2 n plus 1 over 6 n squared, are we good there? And then I can probably... I'll multiply out, right? Oh, Can I multiply out the top? Now I'll multiply out the top. Oh, you know what? Even better yet, here it is. Can you guys take this to the limit as n goes to infinity of this little guy right here? I'm going to multiply it out, though. Multiplying it out goes like this. Whoa, so this is limits again, limits that actually go to infinity. Do you guys remember the rule that we did for what happens if you have two polynomials on top of each other when the degree is exactly the same? It is. We take the highest degree value only right here, right? We take those guys only. We don't care about the rest, right? And then what we do is we just take the coefficients. It's the coefficients of your highest degree. Good there? That was that was a little quick rule. Our major rule was you divide by the highest. This was our major rule, but it was, this is the quick way. You divide by the highest degree. That's technically what you're supposed to be doing. Divide by the highest degree. And eventually you still get the same thing. You still get limit as n goes to infinity of 1 or 6 over 2, which is 1 third. Are we good? Okay, now the question is this. Got about five more minutes or so. Okay, this is like um, Eureka moment mathematics right here, guys. Like what? This all boiled down to one third? So this is the right-hand side. Is that true, true? This is the right-hand side. So our n is equal to four, right? We could still, let's see, we still could be overestimating. Does that make sense? Remember, because our overestimation, we just made a whole bunch of more rectangles, right? But we could be overestimating. But as n goes to infinity, as we made an infinite amount of rectangles on our right-hand side, we get a value of one-third. Are we good? Okay, so let's do this here. Let's do the exact same thing, except starting on the left, and let's see what happens. Good? And we'll see how far we get. So last time. So our estimate by making an infinite amount of rectangles on the right-hand side is one-third. I wonder if that's going to be the same on the other side. Are we good? So let's go with it. Same. Whoa. Same exact thing right here. Chump. Seen this guy too many times right here. 
I go like this, and now I'm going to go from the left-hand side. So it's going to be n slices, is that right? Uh, my L is for the left, my N is how many slices I'm making, and my width is going to be Rn. And what is my first coordinate? Zero. Perfect. What's my second coordinate? One over N. My third coordinate? Two over N. And then we can keep on going. Is that right? Uh huh. And what's the highest we're going to go? Uh, for them. Yes, perfect. So, so 1 over n will still be our width, right? But our top value will be n minus 1 over n. That'll be the highest we're going to go. If we stop there. We good? So we have to compensate somehow for that n minus one. But let's see. So guys, this is it. If we get a one third out of this, we know that we have no extra space on the right hand side. We have no extra space on the left hand side. We know that one third is actually the area underneath the curve for the first time in history. We good? We can actually get area underneath the curve. Let's go with it. So that guy can go away. Is that right? Is that true? True. Zero is going to be equal to zero anyways. So now as we focus on this only, we'll go outside in just a second here. <clears throat> so 1 over n, is that true, true? And now this time we're going to do like, oh, same thing, right? Is this 1 over n squared I can pull out? What's leftovers? Same thing, except only this time we're only going to go up to n minus 1. Okay, we got to think about that. So our our n value is n minus 1, not n. That's strange. Okay, so let's do a little bit of work on the side here. <clears throat> so we need another, we need another formula. Here's our formula. We need a formula that goes from 1 to n minus 1, right, instead of n. So let's see if we can make this one here. <clears throat> so you guys remember this little formula. Okay. So instead of here, what we want to do, we want to go up to n minus 1. So can you plug in an n minus 1 into each of those pieces on that side? What will that make for us? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Okay, so we made a new formula. It's n minus 1 times n and 2n minus 1 over 6. We're good? That's a formula. We just created that to compensate for our extra piece there. Okay, just writing it just a little nicer. We're good? I don't like the n minus 1 first and the n, so I like it to be n, n minus 1, 2n minus 1 over 6. Are we good there? Say again, no, say again. This is going from 1 to n minus 1, right? Okay, can we plug that formula into what we're doing now? Yes, correct. Uh huh. So if you can put it, this all together, let's see. This will be 1 over n cubed times this new formula that we just created over six. What can we cancel? One of the n's, uh-huh. So this would be n minus one, two n minus one over n, six n squared. And let's go with it here. So now let's take this guy to infinity. And the question is, after I foil, foil this out, what? As I take it to infinity, both degrees are the same. I can chop off those degrees, use the coefficient only, or divide by the highest degree, if you want to do the technical way of doing it. Any which way, still going to work out the same. One third. So 
this just sparked we just sparked a whole new math right here guys uh -huh. this is crazy uh-huh okay so let's do we got to do let's see can we do this here uh, we just don't have enough time to finish up five one there's just a piece right here that we got to do we want a generalized formula for this uh -huh, yeah uh, you just want to take your like in this case right we're going to go we're going to take this to infinity but we're trying to figure out what is the let's see here horizontal asymptote technically on this one right as limits just take numbers to a certain value and we're just trying to see because you can't take this off it's theoretical in nature first of all right because we don't have the exact answer we don't ever take stuff to infinity because infinity is not a number that we can just plug in but it tells us what's happening at the end or it's telling us what's happening right before a certain thing happens Mm -hmm. Ah, sure, sure. In this case, right? Oh, yeah. We are increasing the number of rectangles we have. That's what we're going to do infinity. Right? We start off with n rectangles. And then once we got deduced that formula, then we were able to go to infinity. Okay. Are we good there, guys? Yeah? Okay. Um, let's do the generic formula or the generalized formula next time. Let's walk out and um, let's see what we get.